Chris. Okay, yeah. So um, welcome to this morning's session. Um, we will have four speakers this morning, and um, um, let's welcome the first speaker, Professor Pater Yeah, from uh, Purdue University, and uh, he's going to be talking about fundamental properties of a, a 1D van der Waals material theorem. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, okay, it's my pleasure to give this uh, presentation at this uh, virtual workshop. So my name is Peter Ye. I'm from School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the Purdue University. So today I will talk, because this workshop is about the policy 1D and the, in, interestingly, we are working on uh, this materials uh, for a while. So I call the fundamental properties of a 1D van der Waals material thorium. So here's the outline. I first to introduce uh, the, the bulk 3D thorium materials and uh, many people are very familiar with. And then meanwhile, several years ago, we were able to use uh, the solution-based uh, synthesis to glow the two-dimensional thorium films. So sometimes we call the thorium. So, but uh, fundamentally, actually the thorium, as our work pointed out, Actually, it's a real 1D van der Waals material. So it's very different, actually. Although it can glow as a film uh, in the 2D form, but the fundamentally, it's a 1D van der Waals material. So that's why I will, most time I will talk about that. And in terms of its topological properties, it's a very interesting, actually. By transport measurement, the valence band is still a typical, like a conventional semiconductor. So, but uh, the conducting band is uh, have the well knot. Okay, it's uh, has its topological property. So that's why when, when I write the proposal that time, I say, okay, so like uh, your conducting band, like a graphene and uh, the valence band, like a silicon. okay? So simple, I understand that in a simple vision. So recently we are doing some more uh, physics, uh, condensed matter physics studies. By at the high pressure, we're able to close the semiconductor gap and uh, can study the, the topological uh, phase transitions, okay, on this uh, thorium. And uh, finally, I will talk about uh, it's the chirality, like left-handed, right-handed, the this material, naturally it has the chirality and the, what's the impact on the magnetic transport. Finally, is a summary. All right, let's look at the terrorium in the element table is 52. It's quite heavy, big atom. So that's why usually this material have a strong spin orbit interactions. So a lot of people may think terrorium is a metal. These are, uh, you know, images of uh, the bulk 3D uh, because it's shining like a metal. But the reality is not. It's, it's a, a narrow band gap semiconductor. In the bulk is 0 0.35 EVs. It's very, the band gap is very similar like a black phosphorus, but uh, but meanwhile, it's a very stable material, so as I will emphasize later on. So, and it's discovered three, uh, 300 years ago, and uh, interestingly, actually, it have a good name. So, thorium means the god of the earth. Actually, phosphorus uh, doesn't have a good name in Latin. It means a devil. Anyway, so the, so the the atomic structure is like this. So the blue uh, I'm showing here in the picture. So the blue ball is basically the thorium films, but it it is uh, in one dimension. That's why I'm called why it's a one dimensional material fundamentally. Okay, van der Waals material. So because uh, it's an uh, one thorium with these neighboring two thorium atoms, it has the covalence band. Then it's formed like a DNA, kind of either right-handed or left-handed kind of atomic chains. But the, between these atomic chains, fundamentally, it is a van der Waals force. So that's why it's a strong van der Waals force, uh, uh, force in general, the interaction may be strong. But the nevertheless, fundamentally, it's a van der Waals. So that's why, fundamentally, it is a real a 1D, you know, van der Waals material in general. 
But of, of course, it's very, at the beginning, naively thinking if we can accelerate one single atomic chain of the thorium, use a scotch tape, but that's very difficult. But that's some of the work I'm showing later on. So we need to give the credit to our cooperator, uh, Professor Wen Zhu Hu from our uh, industrial engineering. And with his uh, PhD student, and they developed a so-called hydrothermal synthesis. In principle, it's a, a solution-based uh, uh, material growth method. Basically, the chemi chemistry is uh, listed in the lab. Basically, is the chlorine kind of oxide by reduction eventually can form the 2D chlorine fumes in the liquid. So then you can fish them out, for example, these are some of the examples. And the, the, some of the film can be as thin as a couple of nanometers, showing like here, four nanometer by FM. And, and the, the whole film is very big, actually. It's a surprisingly large, so it can be hundreds of micrometers. And if you fish them out on some substrate, it will be very convenient to make the electronic device or do some optical studies and uh, you know, even do the magnetic transport and make whole bars so on and so forth. So if you fish these flakes on top of the grid, take a TEM, you can see the whole film is basically a single crystal, chlorium films. And uh, uh, the, the vertically is very straight, but that's not the atomic chain direction. Actually, the horizontal one seems to have the wiggles, but that's the atomic 1D chains, okay? And if you carefully look, every three, you know, these wiggles basically is a three atoms, three atoms, three atoms as a unit. That's make the helical structures. Okay, so that's a trolling films, what we are mostly work on. So here's a, here's a, uh, yeah. yeah, hold on. Okay, here's some of the uh, more studies. So. Uh, we, we did some RPAS work, you know, uh, showing at the bottom right. And then also we cooperated uh, with several groups. Of, 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 uh, sometime we also uh, cooperated with uh, Professor Fen, Fen Chang, right? We did some of the DFT calculations. And, uh, you know, basically the, the RPAS, the nano RPAS data and with uh, some band structure DFT calculation is uh, pretty much, you know, corresponding to each other and a lot of things. Most of the, most of the features, is, although it's a 2D film, but the most features do very similar to the traditional, you know, uh, terrarium bulk films. So uh, even some transport properties. So that's the current situation. And I want to emphasize is the uh, Purium Zoom of these uh, 3D Trillium, for example. So that's help us to understand the later on um, a lot of discussions. And you can see these are like a hexagonal kind of uh, structures. Because of that, there's some lot of things. It's very similar like graphing, okay? So, uh, you know, you see the mo in the transport in particular the 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 lowest band gap is the conducting band and, and minimal and the valence band maximum at the edge point. So the edge point is a similar like a graphene in the K point or gallium arsenide in the gamma point. So that's the most uh, important uh, you know uh, uh, the in terms of band structure. So sometimes, you know, because it's a hexagonal, sometimes we talk about the H, H prime, you know, so, but it's very like a KK prime once we discuss with a graphene. But, but meanwhile, it's, a, it's not, not the two dimensional, right? It's a bulk, so it features, okay, there. So the, 
that's that's the situation of the of, of the you know Orion song of the Trolling and the Hellpath and that. Okay, let's go back a little bit uh, about for the material properties. So this material, as, as I said, it's easy to uh, in the two D forms and uh, few nanometer. It's not mon monolay, few nanometer, and we can build up a device very easily. And at that time, why it get uh, as a lot of uh, interest uh, for our group is because this material is a uh, very stable. So it's not uh, like uh, force free, you know, it's uh, uh, environment sensitive. So that's why we build up uh, uh, FETs, measure as cologne, let's say green data after 10 days, after several months, and then nothing is changing, even after half a year, one year, it's nothing changed. And the transport mostly is a P-type. That's well known. Actually, if you are, uh, I know now our audience, all these are mostly are young researchers. So actually, thorium is a, a intensively studied material in the 70s in condensed matter physics. And until the discovery of the quantum core, so everybody moved to uh, silicon MOSFET and eventually quickly moved to the MBE gallium arsenide. So that's why this field is kind of almost 20, 30 years, very less studied. Okay, now we are revisit this and hopefully can find a lot of more interesting so way beyond what the 70s people did the other transport. In so, the so 70s, Peter, the people- So Peter, yes. I have a question. Uh, so in the semiconductor industry, do we still use uh, tellurium? In the in in the industry, of course, mostly is uh, used as a doping. And then meanwhile, thorium is widely used in the solar uh, solar cell, right? So you know, as, as a compound, it's not as an elemental material. Okay, I see. It's not a, as a compound in the solar and in the you know uh, two two six in the. In the photo detector or this kind of business, infrared detector is oh, like, like a tin, tin, tin tera, right? A lab tera, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, these are all, but it's not as an element. Okay, that's I not. So we're well, we're trying to work on that, but uh, yeah. So that's why people do know it's always intrinsically, it's you know, un unintentionally doped, like it's a P type. It's a very difficult N type. Okay, it's always a P type. So that's why. Once we build a transistor, you can see it's a P-type transistor, and uh, the mobility is quite high, and the people do know, because it's a narrow band material, okay? Mobility are easy, 700, okay? Between 700 to 1,000, and the transistor you can build up, uh, up easily, and the drain current is uh, pretty good because it's a high mobility material in general. And uh, you will see on-off ratio depends on the thickness, and. Uh, Field effect mobility, you see, mostly is 500 to 1,000. It's easily damped. Okay. So, this is the transistor, you know, the characteristics. And at that time, it's already have a lot of interest, of course. But what we did very uniquely, okay, later on, related with these topological properties, is we have first time able to control the dopamine to become an N type. So what we find is uh, by accident, basically you glow in a low temperature AOD film on top of this P-type thorium film. Actually, because the, the fixed charge, you can say, okay, because the low temperature AOD, there's a lot of positive fixed charge, make all these electron will be transferred to, to the to the thorium film, make it the N-type, okay? Sometimes we call dielectric doping, sometimes we call charge transfer, but the, fundamentally it, it will be convert the corollion from the N-type, uh, P-type become N-type, otherwise the family level will move to the conducting band. So that's why we can build up, you see, uh, without the uh, capping, LD capping is a P-type, with the LD capping is the N-type, you can imagine you can build up a CMOS with the same, same material in general. And uh, let me emphasize again, even the field effect mobility or home mobility at a room temperature, in general, for the both 
N type and the P type is pretty good, you know, you know, 700 uh, up to 1000 kind of level at the room temperature. And the usually material, semiconductor material, you have a good electron mobility might have better home mobility or vice versa. But uh, this, this material has a both high electron and a high home mobility at the room temperature in here. And this material have a lot of other interesting things really worth explore more. So one example, actually, the experiment itself is not that easy because we need to accurately measure the, the uh, I think, the thermal diffusion constant or the, the, the thermal measurement, OK? So basically, you need to isolate uh, uh, isolated the uh, proton film in the vacuum and uh, by the la uh, Lama spectroscopy to measure me measure these parameters. But then that if you uh, were cooperated with the uh, Chen group at Kudu, uh, did this work. But uh, if you're able to do that and really carefully do that, actually you can calculate uh, the ZT value of the torum is pretty at the high side. Of course, it's not. Uh, a very high as some recorder like uh, two, three, or even larger, but it's still element to have the ZT as high as 0 0.67, that's uh, six, three by our experimental work. Okay, much more, there's, uh, you know, this uh, thermal electrical property, just the wing example, and much other things that we can study that. So now let me move, move, move to, why I say this is a 1D van der Waals material. So in, in the 2D material, there is a group of you know, un isotropic material. Usually people do the uh, you know, un isotropic kind of Lama spectroscopy. So you can imagine now the torium is have like the, the 1D kind of the collections, right? So the, you do the Lama, you expect it, probably you will see the isotropic, similar like a graph. You have the specially have some orientations, but that's true. Actually, you can see. Actually, uh, for example, this is a summary. You already see this, is, you know, 180 degree kind of, you know, symmetry there. You know, have, really have the orientation. So let's look at the original data. So characteristically, I think you have three peaks. Okay, these are three peaks. Let's say A1, E2, and E1 for the thorium. If you have a thick, you know, a glow, a thick film, then you are pretty like a bulk case. Then you can, because we have fished out thousands of different breaks, so you can measure to the different thickness, then characterize them, the llama. Actually, you can really see that the characteristics will be shifted once the thickness from tens of nanometer down to you know three layer, bi layer, and a mono layer. And uh, you know by mono layer, some of the uh, you know uh, E1, E2 gets very soft, and uh, A1 is kind of shifted to so the, here to your the right e side. Yeah. Your here your E1 LOTO splitting is not uh, observable at uh, thick film, right? You only observe the E1 LO yes. and yes, E1 Yes, actually like a at five, nine, yeah, yeah, yes, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's we, we observed that, but we didn't uh, slowly, you know, more study, uh, study, uh, you know, this with theoretical people. Yeah, we didn't, uh, you know, take it inside of that. But, uh, that's the observation, you know, by experiment. But at least uh, one thing we can uh, conclude is uh, by Lama, we can see this torium is uh, anisotropic, right? And it's not surprising because the atomic structure wise is 1D, so it, it expected uh, an, uh, uh, isotropic. Not iso uh, uh, yeah, uh, isotropic, yeah, okay. Right, so then we did this one interesting experiment that's uh, I would like to say. So so you, you can imagine you, if you have the 2D film now, so I can do the complex or tensile strength along, the, along this atomic chain 
all cross this atomic chain, right? So then we can look at these three characteristic peak, what's happening. So the simple imagination is because along the atomic chain, these are valence band, uh, uh, you know, each, each toroidal with the neighboring two atoms. So they are strong, right, the bond, so that's why they may shift. But it crosses the uh, atomic chain, they are weakly coupled by, by Van der Waals force. So that's why it may be a little bit insensitive with uh, compressed strain or tensile strain. So that's the imagination that we can. And you, you can transfer the, the toroidal flake on the silicon, silicon dioxide substrate, then bend that. You know, that, that's the, you can probably stress 0 0.1 to 0.3% kind of, if you think about it. It's not a very strong, but it's enough to uh, see some effect. So this is uh, uh, the experimental result. You can see if you if you strain across the across uh, you know along the atomic chain, these characteristic peak really shifted. Okay, you can see these data. But if you are across the atomic chain because the van der Waals force, they are weakly coupled. So actually, the the, the same peak is you know it's not obvious uh, shift. So this is a, another aspect confirms. So this, uh, this although it forms as a 2D, 2D form, it the fundamentally is a 1D van der Waals material. And actually we did more experiment to confirm this 1D properties. What you can, this is another interesting experiment you can do. So now there's carbon nanotube is commercialized. You can buy, uh, you know, these carbon nanotubes by different uh, dimensions. So the single one carbon nanotube can be as small as 0 0.8 nanometer. So if you have a one, uh, the, and the sum is bigger, right? Just, uh, one example, the dimension is 2.3 nanometer. Just like a cavity, okay, these carbon nanotubes. Then you use a PVT, basically uh, like a physical vapor transfer kind of technique. So you, you evaporate the thorium, and this thorium will be filled inside the, the carbon nanotube. And you can imagine if you're small, you may just get the one atomic chain can be filled. And if you're bigger, you have multiple atomic chains can be get inside. That's exactly what you see high resolution TM, you can see that. If you are 2.3 nanometer, actually you can imagine totally can be 19, you know, atomic chain of the thorium filled inside. And once it's smaller, it becomes three to eventually 0 0.8 can put one atomic chain inside. And if you take a llama spectroscopy of each of these, so you can see the characteristics actually really shifted, okay? Once it's a, it's a small, like it's have weakly with, uh, uh, with uh, wall, the, the ca carbon, maybe it's not strongly coupled, but you have more, more chance inside than the, uh, the thorium, you know, can be, you know, more coupled to the neighboring thorium chance, then, then that's give you the, sh uh, the shift. That really, uh, uh, you know, theoretical some support really tells us some band gap will be changed and uh, the shift that can be predicted. It's a pretty much consistent actually can be. And then more interestingly or straightforward, and I want to emphasize is if you really zoom into one carbon nanotube and look at all these terrarium field in the nanotube, and we are really surprised to see actually these helical structures in one atomic chain, it's it still ex uh, exist. So, in other words, these thorium atoms inside of these single wall carbon nanotubes, they still know they are thorium for their neighboring thoriums that the covalent bond still consistent as the bulk case as the helical structures. In another words. In the bulk case, it, it is same as in this 1D case. In another word, in the bulk case, is the 1D value of the material, uh, logically, right? Okay, 
So this white, these three atoms like a, a line kind of here because the three structure, if you do a projection for the TM, it's just a, like illustrated at the, at the top case. But in the spatially, actually, it's a Harkos picture. So, so we want to build up these atomic chain and the transistor, you know, maybe you can imagine this probably the smallest transistor you ever can do. But it's very hard. The reason is carbon nanotube, either, uh, either metal or semiconductor. So it's a dominator the transport. You know, to, if you have a single atomic chain of touring inside, but the, the mostly current will go through the, uh, the carbon nanotube itself. So that's why we have to change an uh, insulated nanotube. So what we tried is the boron nitride nanotube and the crop. Uh, cooperate with uh, Professor Yap at uh, Michigan Technology University. They are experts at glowing the uh, boron nitride nanotube. Unfortunately, the smallest they ever can do now at this moment still at the two nanometer dimensions. So it's not as less than one nanometer dimension. So that's why the smallest toluene film uh, wire or chains we can put in. Is uh, at the dimension two nanometer, but uh, with uh, quite amount of efforts, actually you can build up uh, a p type uh, p type kind of nan uh, terrarium nano nano two nanometer nano wide fat with the uh, boron nitride uh, uh, nanotube as a dielectric, or you can do the charge transfer, make it become n type. And uh, some, you know, some of the mobility, current, and on off ratio summary uh, is showing here with the dimension. So let me look at the, the mobility probably inside that. So there's a two group of data. So one is we can synthesize the nanowise by the dimension, probably smallest is around the five nanometer uh, thorium nanowise. You can build up all these transistors, and because of these, uh, uh, you know, surface or other uh, other limitations, so the mobility, you know, basically the once the dimension smaller than ten nanometer, the mobility start significantly reduced. But if you larger than ten nanometer, mobility is still at hundred thousand gram. And these are few that. A star is uh, is inside the boron nitride we did, so that's why you know by pushing that you can make the dimension the smallest is two nanometers. you can do, and the mobility is become a single digit. All right, so now we move to more physics, and uh, since, uh, since this workshop is about the quantum uh, quantum materials, and, all right, so. The the valence band of the of this H point is uh, I, I I I highlighted like uh, sign like this. This is known even back to the end of the seventies. People called the camel structure. Okay, for the valence band, and uh, in the literature recent years, so there's a lot of confusion there. Okay, so because uh, you know particular where it's all interested on topological properties. So, but uh, in the valence band, it is not, uh, there's some discussion about the well nodes, okay, but it's deeply inside the valence band. And some of the well nodes is because the high pressure or some others make it happen, like later on, I will talk about that. But uh, but in the, without uh, high pressure, or like, the, the valence band is, is like this. And the people did the, even, uh, some theoretical work there. Also, people did the spin resolved the R pass. Okay, so uh, but it's uh, so spin is different. Let's say uh, minus k and a positive k, but it's a, it, it's a, not 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 to the well. Okay, it's it's not to the cross and it's a different of uh, the H four. The uh, H is a six. Okay, so this is H four called the next one called the H five. Then next one called H6. Then is the cross point. Okay. Then is the well not point. Okay. So that that con, con, conducting band is the H H6 
H6, okay? These are people do know, okay? So you do transport on this uh, uh, without the doping, do on the valence band, then you can see the regular quantum hole effect and the Schupp-Nicol has oscillations, okay? So, so the degeneracy is a four, so two is a spin up, spin down, and the two is H and the H prime, okay? You know, valley. Uh, so that's, uh, that. you know, that's, uh, of course, even that data is still the first time we observe the quantum hole or in quantum transport in in graphene, uh, in Toronto in general, okay? So, but the more interestingly is the conducting band. So if you able to dope it and move the Fermi level to the conducting band at the edge point, because the uh, non, uh, what's called non, non special symmetry is a particle structure like a DNA structure. So that's make the H, H6, H6, uh, H6 at the minimum. That's make the cross and the fundamentally this is the well not, okay, with the well not in Toronto. So we, we, we can do LD doping, so then we can bake it. Uh, uh, Peter, may I have a question here? Yeah. Uh, uh, this, could you please remind us, you know, let's see in, in figure A, uh, what is your 2D plane of the films? Is the XY plane or the XZ plane? That's an XZ plane, yeah. Okay, so so the two D plane is actually X Z plane. Yes. Z is the uh, the the, the, chain the atomic chain direction. Yeah. Atomic okay. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure, you get it right. Okay. So 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 that's why by doping you can. This is the n type. You know, your positive bias devices are negative biases turn off. Okay. So that's why the film level now is in the conducting band by the ALD. Okay. By the ALD. So once you get that, so then the mobility is still high, uh, not super high compared to graphene or other cardio arts in the older days. So, but it's kind of a 6,000 6, low temperature. So that's why you can do, you already resolve a lot of features, okay, uh, quantum transport. So this is a lot of data here. So basically all these, uh, you know, three, four, two, I think all can be resolved. You know, at the high magnetic field, 45 Tesla, low temperature, and uh, yeah, that's the case. Uh, that's the case, and you can do the gate sweep and can be also with the three, four. You know, so that's why Farley and the spin can be studied, and this is the whole plot. What do we see? You know, from zero to 45 Tesla, and the gate, and this is so-called Landau fan. So. Landau fan is not, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's complicated. A lot of features related with spring orbit interaction, related to valet, where dig further dig inside. Uh, but in general, still like, uh, you know, still Landau fan. So you, so that's why this material uh, take more time to understand all the detail, but generally is still understandable. That's my feel. Okay, so this is the feature. So what I want to emphasize today, just one point, okay? The one point is here, this, this will not. Because now our Fermi level is moved to the conducting band, can be around these regions. So we, if you carefully look at, because the data, previous data I already showed, right? The, the transport quality is already good, good enough to determine minimum, maximum, and the, you know, fit to the land of fan. That's already good enough. So in this case, you can fit, actually you can clearly see actually the offset. Of course you need to use a minimum, okay? Some, some paper probably even confused with the minimum, maximum, that's another one. Okay, you need to do, do the minimum, okay? So you, you, then you, you fit to the curve and you can see the offset is 0 0.5 instead of zero like Galeon Einstein, okay? So that's the, you know, really hallmark the uh, you know convincing without saying so this is the uh, the exists the barrier phase okay so in other words this is the well not just like uh, sometimes like like points so you have the you you have the bar strong barrier phase so now they will call barrier curvature or something but this 
this is experiment evidence, and this this is a predicted. Okay, predicted by a couple of years ago. You know, once people calculate the here, you see this is H six. H4, H5, there is no crossing, okay? There's nowhere there, okay? Right? H6 in deeply in the valence band there exists, okay? Right? So they, but the outside, they have some overlap there, okay? But they're also very deep, you can see. But this is at a zero gig, gigapower, okay? Without, uh, without uh, uh, high pressure. Where the high pressure is happening here, okay? This paper is talking about, next slide I will talk about. So without a high high without the pre, uh, high pressure, just a zero gigapar. So this is the semiconductor gap. But the H point has the, the spin texture. So here showing. So this will be lead you, you know, lead you the better phase. All right. Hey so Peter, uh, yeah. reminder: four minutes left. Okay. Okay. I need a quick go. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, a little bit of slow today. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So then we do, we do the exper uh, uh, do the experiment by uh, by pressure. So we can add two point five gigapa on this toroidal films, and now we are closing this band. Okay, closing this uh, uh, conducting band. Then you will generate a much land become a semi metal basically on the pressure. Okay. So the experiment can show this. So without uh, pressure, so it's like a semiconductor with the pressure than like a metal. If you do a temperature depend, uh, temperature dependent to this metal, this insulator, this is a metal, for example, and uh, and the data is showing you here very clearly. So you 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 can move the Fermi level from the you know like a more el electron dominated like uh, the positive slope and uh, the more co-dominated the negative slope and in between there's some wiggles these are at the middle of the then it's a uh, you know it's a, like a semi-metal and then you have generated more new wells okay it's like a like a typical se well semi-metal people talking about in as I'm showing here okay so in this case so you still can do the magnetic transport okay to look at the shukunikot that has once your family level are moving. So then you can see, actually, if you are, you are really up like a semiconductor, you have the zero, zero, phase, uh, zero phase. And if you are close that, you will be have the barrier phase. Okay, this is uh, the uh, data showing here. Like a blue, blue one, you have closed now like a semi-metal case, you generate a new well, well not. So these data points are, the offset are moving to the pi. And if you are without a weak and have the open band gap, then it's, uh, it's the same, okay. All right, so the last two minutes, I talk a little bit about the chirality because this material has the left and the right handed. So actually the, the even the valence band or, or the conducting band, the band structure is related with the chirality. It's high, highlighted uh, as I show you you here in the H4, H5. So the chirality can be determined. We can glow the left-handed and glow the right-handed, but we need to pick that up by etching and by the rotation, GEM uh, method. Actually, you can distinguish the left, left flake and the right-hand flake in general. What you can see actually by transport is by so-called the non-reciprocal Transport nowadays is getting quite popular. People study the uh, the topological properties, uh, semi-metals, so on and so forth. So here you can see if you have the left-handed, and if you deflect uh, the uh, the current define the current directions, actually the delta R versus R is you know the uh, the, the the positive current will be negative and. Uh, Negative current will positive, and the right-handed is the opposite. Okay, so that can be distinguished. So what is this delta R here? So here is a very small, okay, ten minus four. It's a very weak signals, but uh, this can be observed. So this is uh, discussed in in some of the theoretical 
papers already. So basically, it's a very like a second harmonics measurement. Basically, we are measuring the whole uh, uh, the the the, the magneto resistance with the different uh, current directions, but uh, it's the second harmonic you know, that, det uh, that defines here, okay? So basically you are measuring the second harmonic by locked in. So this is a V second harmonic versus this V. So you can get a 0.1% kind of effect, but this is a real true by different current, different voltage, all this uh, now, Prosical kind of signal can be really, really observed, okay, in the magnetic resistance. And it depends on the chirality, the left, left or right lead to the positive or negative. All right, so here's a summary. So I think we, we, we can glow the single layer of the uh, 2D, uh, 2D toroliums, but fundamentally, this materials itself is a windy van der Waals force. And we, but it has also the, the, the topological properties, particular once it's in the conducting band. So it has a barrier phase and a well knot. And then your, you, the high pressure closes the band gap, then become a sem, like a regular semi metals. Then you open the new well knots. And in the, uh, in the Shogunis Defas, you, you can see the barrier phase. And more interestingly, actually, this material even have these priorities, and we are still working on, and hopefully in the future can unveil more new materials. And I'm sure the top project probably will also the priority related. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. And these are the students and our cooperative cooperated at least here uh, for this work. Thank you. All right, thank uh, Peter again. And uh, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask. Hello, um, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I just have one small question. Uh, when you fabricate the uh, N-type Tellarium devices, there is a yes. covering layer, right? Uh, to introduce yes. the negative charge. Um, yes. What is the material that you use for this covering layer? Oh, the, I use the low, the low temperature, the key, LD, aluminum, or half new, both are works. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. But the low temperature is the key. So you need, uh, uh, this film need to have enough uh, uh, fixed charge, positive fixed charge, yeah. If you glow by low temperature, and either glow by low temperature and then to affect the toroidal material itself, so then you can get the end type, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, Doctor. May I have a yes. question about the uh, valence band SDH oscillation? Yes. Uh, it seems that there are uh, two whole pockets. Can this information be reflected in the oscillation? Yeah, that's a very good question. Okay, I. We, we, we try, we, if you look at our nano letter paper, but at the end, we have some little bit of discussion on that. Actually, we can find a little bit of a normal if you do the temperature dependent, okay, on the Shukunikha dihat. Usually you cool down the temperature, the Shukunikha dihat oscillation become larger and larger, right? But there is some uh, um, uh, um, abnormal if you get at a very high B field. So, we believe this may be some of the indication related with this camel structure. But that's a very good question. Actually, we, we, we're now back to work more on the, the camel structure. In general, it's also interesting. So this, you know, some people say, right? So this is like a P type, but in the camel inside is more or less like a N type, right? Oh, okay, thank you. You understand, you understand? So, and this point actually in the end of the seventies, a lot of people want to study this point, okay? But then now we'll we go back a little bit on that, yeah. Because okay. I believe our film now is really way better than the, the, the uh, much better controller than the seventies. Because seventies people work on the bulk, right? 
you cannot use a gate to modulate that, right? You don't have the gate effect, basically, right? So that's why you, you need a dope, dope it. Each, each sample are different dope, it, right? Then, yeah, then it's a limit. Right? Now it's much more advanced. Yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, uh, maybe I, I have a, a really quick question. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, on the chirality part. So, so Peter, okay, I think that is re really exciting for the you know chirality measurements. Uh, basically, it shows that you know, um, I mean, the second harmonic uh, experiment demonstrated yeah. the inverted symmetry breaker, right? Yeah. And and uh, basically, the two chiralities are related by inversion symmetry. And yes. And I, I think you know uh, perhaps this distance. Uh, can be used to uh, to to measure the so-called uh, non-linear Hall effect. That's right. Which is, we're, we're which is uh, yes, yes, yes. Do you have data we, on we, that? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's yeah, very. I'm writing up yeah. actually. Yeah, I, okay. I noticed that there is a paper. Uh, you know, of course, my student <laughs> noticed at first. So there's a paper discussed that uh, in probably now already published before in archives. Yeah, I don't know some of the audience are involved. Maybe it seems some name is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, you can see. That. Yeah. Okay, great, great to know you that. have that. Yeah. Yeah, you do see that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Peter. Um, thank let's, you. Let's Let me to stop the... share sharing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me let's move to the next speaker, uh, Professor Yuling Chen. Uh, Yuling, are you there? Hi, yeah. Okay, can you share?